Welcome friends to another 40k video. Today we join Celestine the Living Saint, fighter and inspiration over many battlefields for the Imperium. But what happens when she dies? How does she return? And what challenges does she face there? Spoilers for Celestine the Living Saint by Andy Clark. Saint Celestine wakes on a mountain. All the bodies from the previous time she has died apparently are there, and she finds armour that seems to fit her. As she sees the armors, each reminds her of a previous time she has died. She is pursued by chaos phantoms, but finds her sword and dispatches them, and her wings come back, and she flies towards the light she believes to be the Emperor. She flies through the churning currents of the warp. She meets Pilgrim, who says they have met before, and that she knows who she is. They fight off more demons, then Pilgrim prays, and this gives the saint the power to win. After they talk, first the living saint has questions for Faith, who says they are both of this realm, yet not of it, and Faith flies with her to the Emperor's light. But as they near it, they see a figure on the ground and go to join it. This aspect of the saint is called Purpose, and it sits on a throne and binds Faith with chains, and then at Celestine, and hacks off her wings painfully. The chains then release Celestine, and the saint sees a girl in front of Purpose. Purpose says it's better to kill the girl rather than let the girl feel betrayed by Celestine's failure. The living saint swears she will protect the girl and Purpose says perhaps there is hope. To prove herself she must climb the mountain and she begins not knowing its end. She loses track of time and calls on the emperor for strength to continue and the voice of Purpose comes to her, challenging her on why she fights and Purpose says that she is Celestine's doubts, and slowly her memories of the Emperor's Imperium return. Her tormentor says, for all her fight, it will be for nothing. Celestine responds, that each time she lives, she fights, she enters closer to her reward, and she makes it to a ledge, where she encounters Purpose lying down, and Faith off to the side, and a large figure who says to Celestine, she must order the blow. Celestine thinks of the torment, but says no, and that Purpose's true name is Duty. She fights and defeats the would-be executioner with the help of Faith and Duty, who bathe it in flames. Then the living saint says, Such is the fate of all who defy the will of the Emperor, and removes its head. Then Celestine, still with no wings, and the others enter the cave, the only way through, and inside there's a curdled taint to the air and they see people in the walls, stuck in thickened slime. Her other aspects are weakened by the taint there, and so can't fight. Celestine sees that she faces an immense maggot, something birthed of Grandfather Nurgle, perhaps. They fight, and she sees the sisters slowly becoming as damned as the other creatures trapped there. The demon asks her why she fights. She says, I am Saint Celestine of Terror, you sack of rancid filth and until my last breath I will defy you and the vermin gods you serve. She leaps, her wings beat, and she cuts the creature's head off. Her sisters then join and aid her, their radiance like a star, burning its flesh to ash. She says those left behind will be free now, that the creature of Nurgle is dead, and they fly together into the sky, once again pursuing the Emperor's light. Which became so intense, she could see nothing else around her, the way was hard, but she could not give in. She could not turn back. Then she found herself lying on soft grass. Her sisters had not materialised with her. Near the top of one dune is a child called Hope, and we find out Celestine has been here before, and the girl says she always leaves her behind. Celestine feels if she stayed, she would know the girl, but that would be to surrender to temptation. The monsters. Celestine assures Hope one day she will stay, Clearly, with the name Hope, this girl is likely another aspect of Celestine, part of her left in what I will term the Emperor's part of the warp. The living saint prays to the Emperor that he protects Hope, whilst she fights on. She finds faith and duty and does not mention Hope to them. The Emperor's light falls on them again. Do you know who you are? asks duty. And the Emperor's blade and his guiding light, said Celestine, and the candle flame in the darkness, when all other light has failed, his faithful servants, I am faith, and duty, and hope. We're ready, saint, said faith, approvingly. We are as ready as you, says duty. 
Then let us do the Emperor's will, said Celestine. Launching herself skyward, faith and duty became part of her, and she returned to carry on the fight to fulfil her duty in the material world, and she was reborn, and in this moment sees all she has accomplished, and she was Celestine. So amongst the interesting aspects to me of the law here is that Celestine appears to be in some sort of part of the warp where not too many of the demons can get to her. Perhaps it's the part protected by the Emperor, which is makes sense since she's reborn in that way. And when she comes to our world, is it like with the creatures of the warp where they take on that form that can be reborn again and again, that they can never be defeated? Interesting thoughts. So now friends, I turn this over to you. What do you think to the law that's presented here? Drop me a comment.